Um, let, let, let me just say one thing which I think is really important, because when I say green, I'm not just talking about wind and solar and biofuels. I'm also talking about that. But I'm actually talking about the transformation of the entire economy. And this is really important because mass production or electrification, which are also other big general purpose technologies, they took kind of like 40 to 50 years to get fully deployed throughout mm -hmm. the entire economy. And today, if you look at the IT revolution and compare it to electricity, we're just halfway there. Uh, you know, IT has not been fully deployed. And one way that I understand green, and I really learned a lot from a colleague of mine called Carlota Perez, a very important historian, is that green could be actually a redirection of the entire economy so that so for IT to be fully deployed. And, and what I mean by that, <laughs> what I mean by that is suburbanization was a way that the mass production revolution got fully deployed. And suburbanization didn't just happen out of anywhere. It's not that people just woke up and said, oh, I'm going to go live in the suburbs. I want a washing machine. It was an outcome of <laughs> policy. Mm -hmm. Policy, public policy made suburbanization happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that suburbanization was good or bad. The point is it was a policy to allow mass production to get fully deployed. So the big question today is not state or no state, private or public. It's what you know, what kind of growth do we want, you know, the whole smart, inclusive thing, but also how to steer, you know, IT can go in any way, you know, is it just another gadget we want, or is it really a transformation of the economy in a direction that we want, and like it or not, it's only going to happen with strong public policy guiding it in that direction, and green is a pretty good choice.